Hi, Jenny. I see you have your hand raised. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Are, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, great. I don't see myself on here. Is that? Yeah, when um when the hearing starts, we'll um promote you to a panelist like the other commission members, okay. and then you'll be visible. Uh, Jen Jenny, I just want to clarify that at the last meeting, uh, you you were available for the entire discussion. Of I wasn't opinion. there. I wasn't there. My husband was. Your, your your husband was there for the entire portion of the yes. meeting that was devoted to his property. The letter he wrote suggested that he didn't think he had been, and I just didn't want him to think that that that, that was true. Okay. Well, he he. I don't know. You were talking about. I don't know. It's because at the beginning of the meeting you said no one had bothered to show up, but he was there. So either something wasn't working or I don't know. I don't know what happened because I wasn't there. I also, Ward Welcome is having a lot of trouble. He does not have access to Zoom and he's been trying to call in. I And he just wrote me a message saying, I'm not getting any of them, any of the num phone numbers. So I don't know what to tell him to do. I suppose I could call him and just put him next to me. In a speaker phone, I don't know. Yeah, on speaker phone. I don't know why he's having such trouble. He also says he isn't getting emails. Um, Gotta look for my phone. If I recall, we simply want to ask him uh, whether it's reasonable to expect that we can uh, have the uh, spacing of the balusters in uh, reduced. Yeah, I think it's three o'clock, but let's just wait and see if one more member joins and then we can officially start okay. the hearings. Okay. I'm gonna mute you, Jenny, and then we'll bring you on over as a okay. panelist. I don't, um, I don't, Steve may not be with us. I don't see Nicole either. So it's 301, maybe in one minute, Nancy, we could start. Okay. Uh, Steve is in Spain, I think at the moment. Right. Yeah. And I don't think he was going to be here yet. Reed is in Southeast Asia. So uh, it's just Nicole who could be here. I All thought right, yeah, Nicole have, was coming. Yeah. We have a quorum right now. I guess we can just wait one more minute. Okay. And I was actually going to try maybe calling in, but it'll be funny on my phone and. Are you ready to begin? Yeah, sorry, I was going to try just uh, dialing in on my phone to see if it's really problematic. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, I think you could start. Um, I don't see any, I don't have any emails from Nicole and we can okay. note when she arrives. I'll just start with the introduction to the meeting. So I'm just welcoming you all to this hearing via Zoom of the Local Historic District Commission. Uh, we seek to aid property owners in the town in preserving and protecting the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant in the history of Amherst. A hyperlink to this hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar uh, so that members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone or via that hyperlink. Uh, 
Uh, today's hearing is being, uh, sorry, we require one of three certificates to ensure that new construction and most alterations of exterior architectural features in the district meet requirements. And today's hearing is being held to review two applications. Um, we'll start, I believe, with the uh, continuation of the property on Fearing. And uh, Nate, do you want to begin talking about that? Uh, yeah, Jenny, I, um, yeah, you'll be rejoining as a panelist. Yes, I think I'm up here. I don't know if you can see me or not, but. Not yet. Can you um, start your video? There you are. Okay, now we can see you. I have Welcome. the board on the, my phone on speakerphone because he said he wasn't able to call in. Okay, good. Well, thank you for coming to this meeting. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about the uh, distance between the vertical uh, pieces on the porch. And I, I believe you were gonna, oh, here's, here comes Nicole. Um, I believe you were looking into whether it would be possible to have those more closely spaced together so that they would more closely match what's down below. Uh, and so we wanted to hear more about what you, you and Ward had discovered. So Ward, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, I, I, uh, we sent some. Hello, I, we sent some information in on uh, to, and adding uh, an extra spindle. They don't sell it that you know uh, that close together, and it would all be custom made. And so we uh, sent a proposal and to add an extra one in between, and uh, see if you would agree to that. Just adding in, you know, it'll be an inch and a half instead of one inch, but it'll be close closer match what's there. And uh, you know, uh, it won't block the view as much as doing one inch anyway, but it would cost a lot more money than the proposal that we had sent in if we uh, didn't want to just add one in between. So an, an inch and a half sounds like a good compromise to me, um, but are other, do other members of the commission have thoughts? Are there, um, are there visuals to support this? I, uh, I'll share my screen and yeah, let's just do that. Um, here's, here's what it looks like now. Is that visible for everyone? Yes. So this is what it looks like with, um, as it was rebuilt and here is, sorry, here's the, um, what it had looked like, um, you know, so I'm assuming, a. The existing is maybe a one one inch spacing and a one and a half inch would be just splitting this difference, right? So you'd put one in between every one. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Now I can understand that. And uh, the 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 balusters on the second floor, the new ones, are they are they square? Uh, are they rectangular section or are they round? They're square. They're square. They're square. Okay. It's like down below. Yeah. Well, um, I agree with Nancy. I think that that would be a, a, a good way of uh, resolving our concern and uh, without uh, being unreasonably, uh, hopefully unreasonably expensive. Well, it is expensive. I will say that. But depends on what you think is expensive. But yes, yeah. over $3,000, which seems like a lot to me. But... Uh, Karen? So uh, I agree kind of with Ward. I do think that, I mean, I think we could approve it as is in my opinion. I think I understand that this is a kind of a decorative thing and that if it's too close together, you feel boxed in. I know how hard it is to maintain these wooden things. I've just put in a lot of money to try to maintain our wooden uh, deck and I honestly don't think it is that big a jarring uh, intrusion on the neighborhood to keep it as it is. So I, for one, feel it's okay to accept it as it is. Thank you. And uh, I was going to say something, and I lost my track. I don't train of thought. Uh, 
yeah, I can't remember. It'll, it'll come back to me, hopefully. Yeah, sorry. Elizabeth, did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to ask. So the one that exists now on the first floor, that's one inch. I just want to get the measurements right. You don't want to add something in and end up with it too tight or something. So currently, as it is, there's one inch between the balusters? Yes. Okay, so there's one inch. And then your proposed for the uh, new uh, balustrade is three inches or two inches? Well, well, they, they come, uh, the way they come standard from uh, when you order them is four inches in between. And yeah. it's, it's, they're square, so it's one inch. So if there's four inches in between and you take an inch away from the thickness of the you know baluster then you end up end up with an inch uh, three inches inch and and if you divide then you divide that in half it's an inch and a half it, it'll be in between the space and yeah. so it'll be a half inch off from down below yeah okay that's what i thought thank you yeah i think um uh i know when i first saw the picture my eye went right to the fact that that it, it wasn't the same as down below i mean it approximates the balustrade but it just it just didn't look doesn't look right uh, Nicole? Yeah. Um, yes, I was wondering if, um, Jenny, I just kind of heard it as a kind of a side comment. So by re redoing these balusters, it's going to be $3,000? At least, yes. At yes. least. Probably 3200 or three something like that. Yeah, we sent mm -hmm. a proposal in to Nate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was included in the packet with the estimate and yeah. So I mean, I guess I, I would put um it out there that the current balusters are not exactly as they were before, but I mean they are still attractive, and I don't think it's in the aim of this committee to be putting additional kind of financial implications on sellers when they already are trying to improve the property. Um, you know, I mean, 3000 hopefully it does come in at 3,200 is still $3,200. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of, I'm just not sure it's worth, them redoing what has been done. I think part of the problem is that it wasn't come brought to us at the beginning um, be before they were actually put in. Yeah, well, I, I've never done Zoom before, so and it was hard. And I know people that go on Zoom all the time uh, with the Amherst other departments, and it's always a travesty with them. And even Edward, uh, the her, uh, Jen's wife, tried the first time, and uh, he he was there, and nobody could see him, or, or nobody could yeah, see or hear him. And he was waving, you know, he, a whole bunch of the time he was waving his arms. I, and all that I think stuff. Ward, they're talking about when you got the building permit. Yeah, well, I never. That was my first. But uh, I didn't uh, know either. Yeah, the first uh, that was my first uh, one that I never got a paper one. Last year we were getting paper, uh, you know, uh, permits, and uh, so I, I, I didn't get you know. Uh, I apparently that I don't have the right email with you guys or the billing department. I didn't get wasn't I didn't know that uh, open meant um, that it wasn't um, active. It was uh, listed as active. Yeah. Uh, yeah, active, and so I didn't mm -hmm. mean I, and uh, it was really dangerous up there. So and, uh, I had it blocked off, so nobody could get out there. But uh, I just, uh, it was, I, was, I just felt, and I thought it was okay, you know, to go through. And I'm sorry, and apologize for that. Next time I know, Bruce. Um, I'm uh, uh, influenced by Karen's statement. Um. I think it would improve the uh, appearance to add the additional balances. Um, and I also think it's unfortunate that this process, you know, it was um, it was frustrated by, uh, as, as we've said before, that the applicants uh, didn't seem to understand they needed to come to us. Um, 
and so one can feel well you know we really want to um, make a point that people have to pay attention to these things on the other hand um 3500 or so is, is a fair amount of money and uh, are we uh, do we think that that uh, this is the best way for do we think that's necessary and i'm kind of totally on the fence on this but i think uh, i could be persuaded to join uh, nicole and uh, karen on on this one and and accept the uh, uh Except the except what we have, uh, recognizing that we've made a, a point, uh, and uh, and under the circumstances of uh, the history of this project and what they've been trying to do and so forth. So, uh, Nancy and uh, Elizabeth, uh, I don't know whether uh, I may be a swing voter here. I'm not sure. So, uh, why don't you say what you think and see? Because I don't think we've ever well. We, we haven't had a decision in this commission in the seven or eight years that I've been on here where there was a <laughs> there was a tied vote with us with a swing voter <laughs> but let's see whether where we are I think I can be persuaded as I said by Karen and uh, Nicole Elizabeth um, I wanted to ask the question of Nate about what happened and if that uh, process is fixed now. Yeah, I mean, I think so. We have a online permitting software for local historic district and for a building permit. So a building permit was applied for um, online, and it was never granted. So I think some of it is, uh, you know, having better communication between the town and an applicant. Uh, and, you know, an active status does not mean it's granted. So typically you need a building permit. And so I know there had been some communication with the building inspector and ward. And so, you know, what triggers our review is the submittal of a building permit application. And then this was, you know, um, an application was submitted for this. And, it you know, there was back and forth about what information was needed and it was just never provided. And so it just remains active. Um, you know, we, you know, Ideally, what would happen is um, after two weeks, we just we cancel it, but the work could still get done, right? So I think what happens is is that an, a contractor sometimes people will go ahead and they think, oh, it's active, or I haven't heard from the town, I'm just going to go ahead and do the work, and they never receive the permit. Um, so I mean, I you know, it's it whether or not it's paper or on computer, it happens. You know, it happens probably pretty frequently, actually. So you're saying the reason they went ahead is because of a uh, error on the part of the town? No, I actually think the applicant was yeah. not responsive. Just went ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I yeah. think that could I speak? I think the error. Well, we weren't we weren't in Amherst when this project started because we were out of the country in June, but it, we knew it needed to be addressed, and we knew that Ward had applied for a permit. And Ward kept saying, I haven't gotten the permit. Can you check online? So it's partly my fault because I went online. I've never applied for a permit. And it said active. So I told Ward it was active. But so I just thought that that meant, yes, that it had been approved. So that was my fault. I didn't know what active meant other than, yes, I see it up there. I see that you've applied. I know that he's talked to the building contractor more than once, but it wasn't until quite late in the summer when he found out and told us that we needed the, an, an additional um, review by the Historic Commission. So yes, that's on us. Although when it's the project started, we weren't even in town. Um, and I knew that we had to start it because it was really unsafe. And we do have a, the sidewalk down below. <laughs> and we have a renter up there as well. So um yes, that, that's what happened. Right. I, I mean, but right as it stands though, the building permit still hasn't been issued. Uh, <laughs> and know. so so you know, the, the inspector had been asking about um, you know, like a structural um pieces, like what's the framing size, what's the dimensions, what's the span? And so yeah, you know. Ward says he yeah, has all, all that, that information. I all that. 
All right, I mean, all I'm seeing is that the building inspector approval is still in progress right now on our system. And the last correspondence was from July. Well, one thing I know is uh, if I've been able to talk to somebody, because I tried calling you, uh, Nate, you uh, uh, at least half a dozen or more times, and um, you know, I'm, I'm not tech savvy in uh, the computer department, and I don't even have a computer set up to Zoom. And so uh, it's just been really hard. And uh, and a, a one phone call, I could have you know taken care of this a long time ago. If the building department did it the same way you guys did, the building department would be having a lot of problems because you got to at least be able to talk to somebody once in a while, not just emails. And and uh, that's why it was hard for me. I'm, and I apologize. Right. So typically. The building inspect, like I said, we're triggered. Our permit application is triggered when a building permit is applied for. And so the building inspector said, oh, it's not moving forward because I'm not getting the information. And so, you know, I'd occasionally drive by certain application sites to see what happens. And so I drove by one day and said, oh, wow, they actually went ahead and put up the railings. But as far as I knew, it was still an active permit and it wasn't progressing because we weren't, the town wasn't receiving new information. And we so, stop and knock on the door and said, "What's going on?" Oh no, no, no one was there. This was like on oh, my way to work. Oh, oh. I was, you know, it was just I saw that. Oh, the railings were up, and oh, so yeah. I wasn't, you know, there. Like I said, there's a few of these that happen, and so it's just a matter of, you know, chasing it down. Um, I don't, you know, I so I think you know that's where kind of it happened. I don't typically will, um, like I said, we you know we'll send emails or follow up and make sure, but. You know, like I said, there's probably a number of them where people don't get back to you for whatever reason, and it's hard to have that communication. And so um, there's a few here that, you know, in the local historic district, and, you know, we have a few hundred properties where it's a matter of just keep keeping to try to track it down. Yeah. I guess my only question would be, what's the, my only question would be, what was the cost of the project and is $3,000 a you know, for the commission, it could be that they you deem it a financial hardship or you find that the baluster spacing is consistent with, you know, what's, you know, is consistent and compatible with the building. And so as a financial hardship, usually I, you know, I'd want to know like, okay, what's the, what was the uh, project cost? And is this a, a, you know, a significant amount, you know, proportionally to what it was? Yeah, I don't actually I apologize. I don't have, I'm at a job site and I don't have the paperwork in front of me. I don't know if Jen has so it. It was over eight thousand um, oh, dollars. that was just for the material. No, that, the whole job was twenty, you know, uh, you know, I can't I can't remember. I've done so yeah. many jobs since then that yeah, it was in uh oh god, what was it? Jeez. I, I, uh, I hate to say, but it's in the twenty thousands. Uh, I can't remember right off. Uh, like I say I've uh, just did two decks since then, you know. So anyway, I uh, can find yeah. that that out if that's we, we can find it. But the original deck that was built, that cost the wooden one cost them seventy six thousand dollars. That was for both what, the up, upper and the yeah, lower. And the lower, yeah. So, so thirty five, you know, over thirty five thousand for the upper one, and so they were like, you know, just didn't want to go that route again with. The one with a composite instead. Yeah, I mean, if it was say twenty thousand or more, it's a ten or fifteen percent increase with the additional, um, you know, just a quick rough estimate. Yeah, I wish I could remember that number at the top of my head, but I guess I deal with a lot of numbers all the time. I wish I could know if it would really look better. I don't, you know, or. When you're adding things to something that's already pre-made, I, I don't, I don't know. It, Ward assures me it could be done. I worry about the structural integrity of what's there because it's all one piece. Um, so I think of it as a kind of an experiment. Do will it look better? I hope so. Um, you know, we could. It's not that we couldn't afford it. Um, I can, we can, you know, I don't think we could do it now because it's getting to be winter and we're not there until next spring. So um, anyway, that's my two cents.
I clearly would prefer not to have to put those spindles in, but we will put them in if you, if the committee um, deems that that's necessary. I personally um, think it would look a lot better. Uh, Elizabeth, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. No, no, you go ahead first. Uh, I just, was just gonna say, you know, I, I do think it would look a lot better. Uh, I think this, the spacing looks odd to me at the moment uh, and it looks looks cheap to me at the moment. Um, but I think in, in the sense that it looks like it was just a, um, a slapdash job. I, it would look perfect when it was done, if, if I did it, you know, but, yeah. you know, it would look good. But I, I understand concerns about asking uh, for a 10 or 15% increase in the cost of the project. If you had come to us initially, though, would we have said, and, and given us a choice, I think it's pretty clear that we would have said we want those spaced closer together. Uh, and so I'm a little hesitant to say, well, since you bypassed the process, whether intentionally or not, that you don't have to do it now. Um, so, so that's where I'm kind of feeling, um, uh, not sure what to do. I'd like to hear what you have to say, Elizabeth. I was just, um, uh, I think Jenny made a good point that you don't know, uh, I'd sort of like to see a drawing to see what the one and a half is gonna look, look like. Is that gonna make a substantial difference? Um, the next question I have is the balusters on the porch uh, itself, will those be replaced at some point soon, uh, need to be replaced? And if, in which case are are you going to propose that those be the um, off the shelf ones uh, like uh, like you got for the um, right here? Do you mean are the... I'm confused. The lower ones are not in any danger of being needed replacement because they're covered and it's we've never had a problem with those okay. with the downstairs because it's covered. It's it's not open to you know all the elements as the one the upper deck is. Yeah. And then just intact. to just to ask, I think it was last time. There's there'll be trim that will be put up here. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 That was for the building inspector to take right. a visual before I covered it up. I do see your concerns about because it's so much higher than the downstairs one. It has I, I see why you're concerned about the uh, view from the upstairs floor. Well, it had to be. It is the same height as the other one as the last one because the old one. Yeah. the old one was exactly the same height because if that was the code. Yeah, what happened with the uh, first time they did it, they was, it was okay at 36 inches and uh, they uh, then they got decided that it needed to be up to 42. And because of the multifamily back in the early 2000s and what they ended up having to do is add that horizontal board, which made it look like really awful. And that was just the quickest and easiest way to bring up the 42 inches. So, and so uh, we just made our, you know, we went with the 42 right off the bat. And, uh, you know, you have to order special spindles, uh, balusters to make that happen. And so that's where we, why we went with the 42 up there. And, uh, I, you know, because that's code. Would, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's not, the bottom one doesn't have to be that tall because it's not, not that far off the ground. It's not that far. Off the I do appreciate that you're taking care of this house and in that part of the neighborhood that's important and not everyone does take care of their houses. So you agree. Uh Karin. So there's such a difference between this elegant wooden, um, you know, railing at the bottom and the top, which is the composite, that plastic, it, I don't know, that's part of it. So I think there, there's just going to be that difference. Um, and whether you have that plastic with the spindles closer together 
if that's going to improve it a lot, it, it might be, but I, I guess maybe. We will never replace, we would take the deck down before we put wood up again. Yeah, and I understand that. I understand that because I just replaced <laughs> everything with wood and I think I'll never do that again either because, you know, every few years there you have again spending a lot of money for painting and scraping and I, I understand and it's up there where safety and other things are a big issue. And the house but, itself is, has siding. It's not even a wooden front-facing house. So, right, yeah. right, right, right. I, I, I think there are probably maybe differences in grades of these um, composites. There's high end, and then the low. The we have the high end one. That's the high end. Yes. Okay. And it looks great. Right. Everybody loves it. That walks by and all I, that. I, I know. Yeah. I think when it's finished and the house is landscaped, I think it'll it'll be lovely. Yeah. And yeah. and it's too bad that that's I think a practical solution to a problem. Right, Bruce? Um I've shifted more solidly to Karen and Nicole uh, in the, the listening to the past twenty minutes or so. And here's why. Um, that uh, upper balustrade now is driven by a modern thing called the building code. And it's higher than it would have been. And also, um, from a point of view of just uh, practicality or, or maybe comfort, but sitting on a porch when you've got a, a balustrade like that that is, that is forcibly as high as that because of the concerns that the code has that people will topple over. Um, I think I would want to keep the balusters the way they are. And I think I would feel this way if it had to come before us at the beginning. So now I'm pretty comfortable in saying I'm happy to uh, vote for a certificate of appropriateness based on the current scheme, because I think when you're using that balcony up there and you sit down on it, if we had put if we put those extra spindles in, you're going to be walled in. It's going to be a fairly disagreeable place to sit. And because uh, of the current codes and everything, which are non-historical, this uh, is is this this balustrade is 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 not a vestige of its historic whatever was there historically, because it's been driven by a modern uh, requirement. So I think we we should. Um, Acknowledge that and acknowledge that just because uh, we, in pursuit of some historical accuracy on balance bracings, we shouldn't then allow the fact that the code is then lifting this up to a rather uncomfortable height from the point of view of someone sitting, that we should create, we should, we should use this, uh, our, our pals on this commission, to create a, a disagreeable space for someone to sit. Um, uh, it's 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 not really a, a historic element anymore, and I think we should uh, give up trying to make it that way. And I think we should accept what we see before us. I think that was a very helpful statement. Um, I'm ready to join you in your vote, Elizabeth. Are you feeling more comfortable with this? Yeah, I, I think what um, uh, I'm I'm thinking is that this is maybe the first one in this neighborhood, and don't you know there's going to be more? Um, and it, most people are going to want to go toward the composite simply because of expense. And then there's the issue that um, of um, a code and everything else. It's sort of like you, you might as well go with it now because it's it's going to become a thing. And I think we're going to have to... Uh, uh, as modern people have to accept it. So I, I would vote to uh, allow them to do it. Well said. Are we ready to take a vote then on uh, a certificate of appropriateness as is? Uh, sorry, just to uh, interject quickly, as a public hearing, we could ask if there's any public comment. Oh. Yeah. Uh, from us, I believe. I don't see any hand, just hands raised. And I guess we vote to, the vote includes the vote to close the public hearing. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, a second. Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, so moved. 
uh, a vote to grant a certificate of, sec of appropriateness for the property, blah, 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 as, as, uh, as currently uh, 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 constructed and intended to be completed, and a vote to close the public hearing. I second. Uh, is there any further discussion before we take a vote? Uh, okay, Bruce? Uh, aye. Uh, Karen? Aye. Elizabeth? Aye. Uh, Nicole? Aye. And I agree also. So uh, we are then granting that certificate. Uh, and thank you very much, Jenny and Ward, for coming to this meeting. Thank you very much for understanding. And thank you, and I'll make sure this won't happen again. I apologize. Thanks. Thanks. We, thank we understand that it's it, that the modern age is hard for people. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So we have uh, one other uh, property that's come up, and that's the property on uh, North Prospect. Um, Nate, do you want to bring yeah, in anyone from there? Yeah, if you want to raise your hand if you're here to represent the project. We'll promote you to panelist. Okay. Hello. Hello. Thank Hello. you for coming. Thank you for the promotion. <laughs> uh, I am Jackson Powers with Valley Fence. This is John Horton Hello. with Valley Fence. Uh, uh, welcome to our commission meeting. Uh, would you like to uh, speak to this project? Uh, yeah, so um, we're back here. I think actually we were here recently with their um, other renovations, but uh, here we are hopefully wrapping this up. This is a, a fence project. Um, the proposal is uh, for a cedar fence in the front of the street view. Um, which is five feet high of uh, cedar fence. And then the top is another foot of um, a spindle topper. And then as it turns the corner to the property line, to the neighbor's house, it changes, um, has two panels again of that cedar and then changes to an ornamental metal fence. Um, so I have that plan on, uh, on CAD, which I can show you kind of like where we propose this. And then I have some images of what that fence looks like um, that we've recently installed. Yeah, you can share your screen if you if you can. Sure. Um, cool. Yeah, let me know if that works. Uh, it, did, it did not let me. Okay. All right. Let me. Um, all right. Can you try now? There we go. All right. Great. So um, here is the property. So the PL is property line and the SBL here is the setback line. Um, so this is the house. Um, some of this is a little left over from the project and we did work back here. So that's, we might see a little redundancy here, but um, the red line here is where we're proposing the fence. Uh, it starts at the corner of this house. Um, not This is their porch. That, and um, so it starts at the corner of the house and goes all the way down to the property line. And then it's two panels of that cedar. And then again, the ornamental metal fence where it meets an existing fence in the backyard. Um, that fence looks like this. So it is five feet of um, tongue and groove cedar panels. And then it has a spindle topper that goes on top with these posts with um, the pyramid caps. Might have some, uh, here's another image of that. Uh, So sorry, quick, all, sorry. They, I'm sorry. Quick question: Were the posts in the other image? What are they, are the posts always pressure treated, or are they? Um, the other ones look like they were. Um... Yeah, there are some. So these are cedar posts, right? And that's what we're planning on installing. All right. Yeah, some of them are you know different projects will have pressure treated posts as yeah. well as cedar posts are the two available materials for this type of fence. Mm -hmm. Are there comments from uh, commission members and questions? Well, then there's, there's the metal fence too yep. uh, on the side, right? The, yeah. yeah. So then I'll transition to this, which faces um, their neighbor's house. 
Um, and there's a little bit of land between the house and this. Um, Sorry, how high is that fence? I guess I forgot, I forgot what the dimensions four are. Feet, four feet. Four feet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can but you wood, go back a second to, oh, sorry. The wooden fence is five feet, you said? So it is five feet um, from the from the bottom rail here to the top of the, the solid, and then it's another foot. So the total is six feet. Um, they get a lot of headlight traffic on that road, especially when people come out of CVS. Right. Um, so they're trying to create some privacy back there. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of parking there. Um, and it's set pretty far back from you know, as we looked at here. So this is, you know, I think it's 15 feet to the front of the house to that street. So th then even further, so, you know, over 20 feet from that, from that um, street. Elizabeth? Oh, I just had a question of, so from North Prospect Street, the fence is not in front of the house, it's on the side of the house. Correct extending out further and then show me where the metal fence begins just point your pointer sure yeah. i have i can show you this in 3d granted the okay the, the um they're not a great representation of what it looks like other than like where it okay. starts and ends mm -hmm. um and the last panel will be a go from six to four so this will sweep yeah, it'll be a straight straight down line hmm as a transition panel. What about at the other corner? I'm sorry? At the other corner, is it going to, it's a right angular junction, not a straight junction, but is the last panel of the wood going to sweep down there as well? Not there. Uh, no. Not, no, not there. Where the junction between the four and the, high, the low and the high is. Oh, that's where it will, yes. Yes, but there's another junction there. Over here in the corner? Yes. Oh. No, so this um, this is an existing fence in the back. It's actually more like a oh, okay. fence. It's um, four foot high. And okay. it's also four foot high. Okay, thank you. That's good. Yep. And there is a gate that um, would be here. Okay. And, and that matches. Yeah. And what's the reason for the metal fence being lower and different? Friendliness? Um, aesthetics? Yeah, aesthetics, um, probably, you know, I, not to speak for uh, Ronnie and Patrick, but um, I mean, the wood is certainly more expensive as well. Um, you know, there's there's less privacy needed maybe on that side. You're looking at the side of the house versus, you know, students and, you know, public walking by. Um, I could jump in and just, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's... Uh, We've also had a little bit of an issue of um, unwanted uh, plants kind of growing into our yard from the other side. Um, so it's it's sort of a good fences make good neighbors sort of thing. Plus it's aesthetic, um, you know. But it's because it's low and it's not uh, it doesn't really cut off the view from the side. It's just it's not. It's not so much meant to be a privacy fence as just a, a way of uh, demarcating the you know our property from theirs and making sure we can control the various things like poison sumac and whatnot that have been growing on the property line. I mean, we were, have a great relationship with our neighbors, but they're also moving. So um, uh, in any event, it's uh, that's all it is. Are there questions from other commission members? Could I also add? Could I also add that we have a, um, uh, as uh, Jack said, um, a front yard that extends some twenty feet from the fence to the property line, um, and that extends all the way across the front of the house. And there's actually a small side yard on the north. None of that is fenced in. It's all open. It's being converted to gardens. Uh, so um, and we don't. Anyway, it, there'll be it'll also it'll be sort of uh, open to some extent uh, the way it is now. It's just in the rear part where we 
entertain on our new patio uh, and when we're doing other things is sometimes it's useful to have a little bit of privacy. Nicole? I guess um, I understand having the fence going all the way back, but I didn't catch an answer as to why there's two different fences, like why you're not just doing the wood all the way back, like why you're changing to metal. It's expense and it's um, it's not really necessary to have a high fence in that area. And the the it's the same height as the fence in the rear. Fence in the rear is is metal and wire. Um, so it's it's sort of a continuation of that thing to create an enclosure. Oh, okay, so it, it so it's balancing what's in the back. That's right. Th it, that that will blend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. I don't know if we'll I'm gonna have to do a, a school pickup. <laughs> okay. Are you are you in support of this, Nicole? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, I actually don't even okay. know if you'll see that ornamental metal fence from the street, considering that other houses kind of starts right there. Right. Yeah. But, you know, kind of back there anyway. Karen has her uh, hand up, Nancy. Uh, Karen. Yeah, I, I was at the house and Ronnie had shown me what she was going to do. And knowing her and her gardening ability, she already told me what climbing roses were going to be growing there. I think it's going to be very attractive. And I do understand living in that area and having the beautiful stone patio that you need to have a little bit of privacy. I think it's going to be extremely attractive knowing uh, the garden in front of it and how it's going to in no time at all be uh, just a, a kind of a background for lovely flowers. So I I would, I say we approve it. Bruce? I agree. Um, I agree. I think it's uh, uh, worthy of a certificate of appropriateness and maybe at this point I'll so move. Um, and uh, and others, I don't know. I think we've all declared, but maybe not. And who has can has so in discussion? But just so there's a motion on the table, and I suppose also a motion to close the hearing. Um, so we've we've got those two moved at least. And uh, but I'm supportive. Do we have a second? Karen, I second. Are there more questions or comments? The only question I was going to ask on the street view, if you could show how high the fence was on the house, where it comes into the corner. Sure. Um, yeah, it is look, difficult yeah. from here. Um, trying to see if there's something to reference. Um, I think we could call mid, mid window. For instance, if I'm, I'm sharing my screen, if I, you know, if it's here. Um, oh, you know, is it, you know, does it start? You know, at the base of the window and come across. I think it's a little bit taller than that because you know that's, you know, um, it's about four or five feet. Yeah, I think that's about five foot. So I think you're about yeah mid sash. Yeah, like right there, and it would come. However, yeah. Yeah, although, yeah. Although when you get to the left side of your screen, it does seem tall, but maybe that's you know it's hard perspectively. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a, a fish eye. Uh... Yeah, I mean, our CAD there can is is accurate. I could we oh, look okay. at um, and um, if that was accurate, that was fine. I yeah, that that was showing a six foot panel, and that was more solid than what we're actually installing. All right. Uh, are there any comments from the public? Nate, uh, Ronnie, you have your hand raised. You can unmute yourself. Ronnie. Oh, sorry. I I think Patrick said what I needed to say. Thank you. I didn't realize that. Are there any other comments? Uh, there's two other members of the public. I don't see any hands raised right now. Are we ready to vote then? Seems like we would be. Uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Uh, Karen? Yes. Bruce? Uh, yes. And Nicole had said that she favored it, and I also favor it. Um, and I just want to say that the rest of your project looks very nice. 
So I'm, I'm quite pleased to support this next step. Uh, thank you for coming to the commission with this and uh, for good luck with the rest of it. Great, thank you all. Appreciate thank it. You. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks Have everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Nate, do we have any other business that we need to conduct today? Uh, let's see, on the agenda we had, um, you know, the East Amherst um, district, I guess I will say that, you know, it was presented to the CPA committee for the funding to have, um, you know, we can't, the, because the price was over 10,000, we couldn't just use Chris Skelly, although we provided the cost estimate, but the CPA committee is discussing that and they'll vote uh, for recommendations probably later this year. Uh, the money wouldn't become available until July, but it seems like, you know, they, Nancy was there. I, I, it seemed like they had a pretty receptive yeah, that's how it felt to me. Uh, yeah. We had support from the Historic Commission as well, so I think that was helpful. Yeah, yeah, I think the, um, I spoke with a CPA committee member and I said, yeah, the importance of what the work would be doing is really it's new inventory forms and documenting the history of the place, whether or not a district ends up getting approved, it's just that we have now this resource that becomes available. We have a study report, we have, you know, um, new photographs, new research. And so I think they'll, I, yeah, I don't know, who knows where it'll go, but um to me, it's not a big ask. You know, the CPA budget's, you know, quite big, and we're asking for twenty thousand. Um, and uh, and there's no, it didn't appear to me to be a very large uh, um, number of applicants this year. Right. It's still, you know, right. So there weren't too many applicants. Some of the asks were pretty big. So you know, say there's mm -hmm. one and a half million available. I think there's over two million in requests, but some of those could be, you know, budgeted or. Mm. you know things could be moved around a little bit but um the only other one was the par changing the bylaw oh right uh, to yeah, include parking, parking. and yeah. this is something I, i'll share my screen i had shown we i we talked about this earlier and i keep talking to the building um commissioner about it and so is that visible for everyone mm-hmm so one one is sorry, I have all these controls in my way. Um, you know, uh, you know the local historic district bylaw is part of the general bylaw. It's not zoning, so it can't regulate use. And so when I I posed this question on the mass planners listserv, and some community said, "Oh, your bylaw already can regulate parking." Um, others said, "You have to be careful; it's not a use." And I said, "No, it's really regulating the, the you know this impervious surface area." So. Um, the building commissioner and I said, well, we could def have defined parking area as an improved impervious service within a property designed to accommodate a total of, you know, five or more parking spaces. And so that, you know, and that, that could be adjusted, but the idea was that, you know, a drive aisle or other things would not be included. It's really the parking area itself. And then um, down in structure, we would insert, you know, insert parking areas as a structure. Additionally, one other thing that we've talked about uh, is inserting uh, drainage piping and in infrastructure as a structure. I mean, the structure definition right now says means a combination of materials other than a building, including a sign fence, wall, walk, terrace, or driveway. But what we we could see is that someone has like you know drainage piping or over overflow structures or other things that. I, you know, I think the district can regulate now, but if we wanted to, we could insert, you know, if we're amending the bylaw, we could might as well consider what else do we put in there. Um, so anyway, so there's how we would do parking. The last other place would be, sorry for the scrolling, would be down in the criteria. We say if something's substantially at grade, it's exempt from review. Um, and we would have some language to say, um, it's something like we could say, however, parking areas on a property that have, again, a total of so many spaces are reviewed by the commission. And I, I think, um, you know, and there's some other ways to word it. Uh, you know, are we, um, you know, what's the right number? Is five parking spaces the right way? Uh, is it something else? Um, so, you know, it, here down below I say, or only review parking on properties if a project involves additional units or bedrooms uh, and adds to a certain number of parking spaces. And so, um, 
you know, the local historic district can regulate how buildings and things are situated on a property now, and it could then inform what a parking area looks like or how big it is. Because if we think of, you know, property is a building is too far from the street because they want to put a parking area in front, the commission could regulate that now. Adding this language would just make it clearer uh, that if someone came in on a residential property and wanted to put in a 20 car parking lot, uh, that it would need to be reviewed. The only other tricky piece with this is typically paving does not need any type of permit. So if someone were to have a driveway and they have a garage set back from the house and then they decide that behind the house they want to just add a parking area and do nothing else to the property, they don't really need any other, they don't really need permitting from the town. And so I think um, when this lower box here, the reason why we said if there's some other things happening, then we would capture it because if they're adding to the property in terms of bedrooms or adding a, a structure or something, then usually there's another permit that's associated with it. And then we ask about parking. But if someone were just to want to put a little parking area in, we wouldn't know about it. Um, so I, th I think it just becomes one of those things. That's where maybe five spaces is enough where it's a pretty big, a bigger project than, you know, paving something for a two car turnaround or something. It's, um, I think those are the considerations. Bruce? I think five is the right number. I mean, the right threshold because uh, the way things work typically, uh, you need, uh, one is obligated to provide and wants to provide the uh, two spaces per unit. And if we uh, were uh, faced with a duplex, that would be four. So it would be, um, it would mean anything that's getting larger than a duplex, uh, notionally anyway, that would, uh, uh, this would likely be triggered. So I think five is a good number for that reason as the threshold. Um, the rest of it makes sense to me, I, I, except for the what we're looking at right now. And I know this is, you're just, it's, it's not even a draft really, it's a, it's a conceptual structure for a draft to be uh, generated by or through. But I, I think uh, I wouldn't uh, put, uh, I wouldn't insert parking areas in B here and then at the end of it, say however parking areas i think i would just leave parking areas out and at the back at the end there say in addition instead of however mm -hmm. in addition uh parking areas on the property blah blah um uh, or, or something like that because the the parking areas is mentioned twice it's just a bit right. cumbersome right, but otherwise right. uh it it feels uh, it makes sense and i think putting the drainage structures in because now is you know it's the while you're up get me a beer uh, logic um so yes i think so i mean the drainage structures typically are either at or below grade but i'm th uh, you're you're thinking that there might be head walls or something like that that would be arguably above grade or right and so i think you know what we've seen on a few that um especially with the new stormwater regs so the town just adopt us in new stormwater regulations, uh, the state's doing some things. And so um, smaller projects that typically um, maybe didn't have to deal with stormwater now do. And so I'm, I'm envisioning that what we could see is in a front yard of a residential, you know, an overflow structure, right? Or something that all of a sudden is like, oh, why is there this concrete, right? Headwall or box or something yeah. in the front yard. Yeah. That's it for me. Well, that's helpful that you thought about that stormwall structure. Uh, Elizabeth or Karen, do either of you have comments? Yeah. And my ahead. only comment is I think it's a good idea to do it, to add it in there. Mm -hmm. Karen? I agree. I agree. I, th yeah, thank you for proceeding with this. Uh, I think Steve would be interested in seeing this because he was pushing for this earlier. Uh, what's the next step then, Nate? Yeah, I actually, I, I was able to get the bylaw in a word <laughs> format from the town manager's office. So I'll actually okay. do this and track changes and I can send it around to the group and then, uh, yeah, and then we can go from there. I think the next step would be, um, there, um, I thought the town was looking at changing some other parts of the bylaw. And there's one other section of the local historic district bylaw too, I think that needs to be um, 
updated, we say that a commission member is required to serve their term even after the, uh, it expires until the replacement is um, appointed. <laughs> and I don't think we can. I don't think we can require uh, a commissioner to stay beyond their term. And so, uh, I there the town attorney had some language that they wanted to <laughs> to put there instead. And so I think that would be all rolled in. Good. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want uh, okay. I wouldn't want the sheriff coming to my house and uh, <laughs> dragging me. It was to a written meeting. there for you, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to keep you here, Bruce, as long as you. Uh... <laughs> yeah. This. Well, let's hope the sheriff is a nice person. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think it could be as. You know, if the next meeting, if we like the track changes, I, I'll talk to the town manager's office about how do we propose this. You know, like what I, you know, it might be that it goes to uh, council and they refer it, but there's probably, you know, there's probably some intermediate steps that need to happen. Good. Uh, do we have any unanticipated items that need to come up, or is there any public comment? I was only one member of the public now. No, no anticipated items, but I was going to say to Elizabeth, to your question about what happens with permits, uh, it is interesting, um, you know, um, like HVAC, mini split installation. Uh, in Massachusetts, an electrical contractor can apply for an electrical permit and begin the work uh, without having it be approved. And then within five days, the town uh, municipality um, needs to issue an electrical permit. Um, so for instance, and sometimes they may need a building permit, but those types of projects, the electrical contractor will submit an application. They're probably even there the day they submit the application on site, getting the unit ready. And then oftentimes uh, the town, whether it's with an local historic district or not, is approving it almost retroactively because the way, you know, this, you know, like I said, this five day window of when you can apply and get a permit. Um, and so in the local historic district, there's like, you know, a few outstanding applications, like the one we saw today earlier, where people apply, there's correspondence back and forth, and then we, there's, you know, then the communication stops. And so on the town's end, we're assuming, okay, the project's not moving forward. And, you know, I don't, the only way I follow up is I drive by, you know, I'll try to drive by these sites to see if any work's being done. What, what could be happening is we should just cancel the application. Uh, typically it's a building permit application. It's not a local historic district application. So in our permitting system, anytime there's a building permit for any type of work in a local historic district, I review, it gets kicked to me. And then I'll say if it's exempt or it's not, you know, it's not applicable as interior work. And so it's, it's not even a local historic district application at that point, it's still a building permit application. And then we're just trying to work with the contractor to get enough information to determine if it needs review by the commission. And so there's, you know, like five or six out there where it's been a while and we're still, you know, everyone's every periodically I'll send another email or do something just to be like, hey, we know what's happening here. And, um, you know, so it, it does happen. I don't, I think it's more of a, I don't think it's, you know, like malice or anything. I think it's honestly just not, contractors not either being familiar with the permitting system or just not having good communication. I've um, worked with a lot of contractors recently, and I I find that they're so good at what they do. But email, Zoom, you know, all that stuff is just not something they do every day, and um, a lot of stuff gets missed because of that. Because I'm operating in a world of like you are of emails and Zoom and all of that. So I don't know if there's a way to kind of make it easier for some of them or um, yeah, yeah, or I mean, follow we, up more with phone calls because they don't, you know, email's not a thing. No. Yeah, no, I mean, phone calls. Yeah, I, I like to try to do email only so we have a written record. Yeah, um, I understand. Well, you know, because I, I, I won't give anyone approval over an email or a phone call, but um, yeah, no, our, our, the staff on the second floor, especially at the counter, they'll they'll hand, you know, they'll still take paper applications and then input it, but everything for the building permit as of last July is all oh. electronic. So it is mm -hmm. a whole new system. Before then we would accept paper copies and process things, you know, with, um, so it, the, you know, I feel like this year has been a transition where people are still learning that there's a whole new, we're doing a new permitting software. So I'm, I'm imagining, you know, 
in the next six months, right? By next summer, next spring, when construction starts, most people will be familiar with it. And I think it's just the learning curve of the new system. Yep. I have to go. All right. I think we're good, are we? Or is uh, there any formalities? We, do we need to set a meeting date for our next meeting? Yeah, we could. I mean, I don't have any, I was going to say, I don't have any pending applications or anything. Um, so we could meet in, um, you know, like mid-December, I guess, if we needed to. Um, so I, I will be out of the country then. Um, is there a certain date that... Um, I mean, so what, when are you, I mean, we could meet then in early January. I mean, I. I'll be back by, by early January. And we typically meet then meeting on Mondays. Yep. Monday's good. Mm -hmm. So that would be either the 8th or the 22nd. Should we say January 8th? And then, okay. you know, I'll, if we have something, if we, if we need to, we can meet some other time, but we could say January 8th for now. Okay. Got it. All right. And we're saying three o'clock. Mm -hmm. All right. Got it. Okay. Do uh do we have a move to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, Karen? Second. Elizabeth? Aye. Bruce? Oh, I usually vote by clicking the leave webinar. <laughs> 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 Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye. Bye.